Hi, Heather here, and I am with Carlin Stone, and we're at the Dixon Dam. Carlin is the manager of the Dixon Dam, and he's been so gracious to spend the day with me, giving me a tour of everything that's going on out here. So how about we take off and you start giving me everything I need to know? Sounds great. Okay. Could you give me a really quick explanation as how the dam operates? The primary purpose of this reservoir is to supply assured year-round water supply for downstream communities. So in July, we'll usually start to fill using mountain runoff, like mountain snow melt that starts to, to melt and come through the river system. And then we'll, uh, we'll fill by fall in the reservoir. And then, uh, like I said, we start supplementing low flows because we don't get a lot of water coming in uh, during the winter time. Um, and historically, that's, you know, that's the reason they constructed the dam was to, to offset those low flows. So we're supplementing additional flows all winter, which of course that draws the reservoir down over the winter time. And then you get what you see today in the spring. Uh, you've got a low reservoir and it's kind of perfect timing um, to capture uh, any larger flood events that we can come in. Uh, the other benefit too, specifically for, for a community like Drum Heller is we get what's called the plain snow melt, which usually happens in March or April. Um, and we'll get a little bit of a a wave that comes in the reservoir from that, from increased uh, localized flows. Uh, we typically try and absorb that entire event so that you don't even see that downstream. And the main benefit of that is we don't want to add those additional flows when the river is, is frozen over still downstream. That would contribute to ice jamming. So that's another key benefit that we, uh, we absorb that kind of that first spring melt that comes in. Um, from the plains so that we don't exacerbate that problem downstream with, with ice jamming. So when I look out there, I see that there's, there's a lineup out there. So I'm assuming that the higher that is, the more electricity is developed, the more... Can you explain that a little bit more for me? Sure, yeah. So what you're seeing on the, the main dam face there, that would be what we call full supply level. That's what we would fill the reservoir to on an annual basis. Um, so that is about seven to eight meters of, of differential is what you're seeing right now. Um, so that's available right now for flood storage, um, should we get an event coming in. But to answer your question about power generation, again, power generation here is just a secondary benefit. We don't operate for power. They just take whatever we give them for, the, for that volume. When I look out here, I don't see any boats float, floating around. So I assume it's just because it's not the May long weekend yet. So however, but the rumor is, is that you guys fill this for the people to run their boats. Can you just clarify that? For sure. So right now, obviously, yeah, there's no boats. The boat launches are pretty much high and dry because the reservoir is uh, quite low right now um, in preparation for that high risk flood season. Uh, so we want to be able to maximize how much flood attenuation we have in this reservoir. Um, to benefit communities downstream such as Drumheller. We do start filling the reservoir depending on basin conditions. If we're in a drought year or a wet year, it varies every year based on these conditions. But uh, typically we do start to try and fill the reservoir uh, at the beginning of July. And that's just naturally occurring because we need to get the reservoir full by the fall to provide that assured water supply. So I would say uh, we're not filling it for recreational purposes. Uh, they get whatever we give them and that's a side benefit to the recreationalists around the reservoir. So come July, usually the water's high enough for them to put their boats in and utilize the reservoir. We were just over at the Dixon Dam, the spillway, and now we are right here. Where are we at now, Cal? So this is the, uh, what we call the fuse plugs. So there's two fuse plugs here and uh, there's a lower elevation one and a higher elevation one. So this one is what we call our auxiliary fuse plug. And then we've got an emergency fuse plug. Now these systems here are designed, um, you'll see on the, the downstream side of them when we were driving up, that they're just gravels. They're designed, if they were to overtop, they would self-erode. And the reason they're here is to ultimately protect the main dam from a failure if there was a large flood that that spillway couldn't handle. So when I look behind me, I see this gravel and stuff and, and we're using clay in the valley. Can you really explain why we're using clay and you're using gravel? Yeah, so in partic particular, these fuse plugs are uh, made out of purposely erodible materials. So when, they, when this structure overtops, 
Uh, it, we want it to erode and that's why we've used sand and gravels here. Uh, on diking systems and in dams, it, clay is the, the material of choice in the cores of them to make them impervious to water. Um, so you don't want your dikes leaking or failing for, from water going through them. Um, so that's why it's a great idea to use uh, clays and bentonites uh, for, for construction of that. Well, and that's perfect dikes. for us when we live in the valley and we're a bentonite, half of our valley is bentonite, so we actually have access to what exactly we need. So that's perfect. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you clarified because that is a, you know, a question that we get asked a lot and, and it explains a lot. So can you explain what happened in 2005? Sure, yeah, so 2005 was uh, the highest record flood in the Red Deer Basin. Um, we had uh, over 2,300 cubic meters a second coming into our reservoir. And we were able to, just based on the heads up that we had on the forecast and with the available storage in the reservoir, we were able to reduce uh, that flow to 1,550 cubic meters a second, which is what the downstream communities saw. So that's really important in the sense that uh, if the dam wasn't in place, uh, a community like Drumheller would have experienced flooding and overtopping of their diking system. Um, so that just, uh, it underscores the importance of uh, a facility like this. So without the dam, we would have been, well, we could have been. Chances are, yeah, the, the, the current flood protection dikes would have, would have overtopped if Dixon wasn't able to, to remove about 30, plus percent of that flood event. We were able to take that much of the peak off of that flood. So. Well, that's great information because that's a, that's a myth that's out there if we, if we, you know, the dam didn't really help us in 2005. In fact, if we wouldn't have had the dam, we probably, our community would have been yeah. a good portion out of the water. So then we went through another pretty serious flood in 2013. Uh, so 2013, we had uh, 1,800 cubic meters a second coming in. Uh, to our reservoir and again we were able to reduce that by approximately 30 percent and uh, we only released 1200 cubic meters a second uh, to the downstream communities. Well thank you for the great day, thank you for all I've learned and uh, this is just incredible and I'm excited to get this out and share it with the community. Oh, so, you're very welcome, thanks, thanks, for, your thanks for your time.